Arsenal have a dilemma. With Gabriel Jesus back, Trossard firing, and Nketiah set to return, the centre forwards are stacked. So today we'll find out what Arsenal have planned for following Balogun. We'll also get an important update on William Saliba, discuss a potential free transfer for a winger, and get a glimpse into Arsenal's beautiful new third kit. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14 and welcome back to your boys channel. The title charge is getting interesting, but what is happening at the Emirates Stadium? Well, today we're going to find out, so as per, smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. We're starting off with Arsenal's forward dilemma. Arsenal have some top centre forwards. The false nine of Gabriel Jesus, the assist king Leandro Trossard, and even Eddie Nketiah who scored some important goals. With all those options, Mikel Arteta has a massive dilemma. What is he going to do with following Balogun? 21 years of age, he has taken over Liga. And over the past weekend, he was at it once again. This time scoring a 91st minute penalty to help save his team a point. Balogun now has 18 goals in 29 games and 3 assists. Only behind Jonathan David and Kylian Mbappe in terms of league uh, top goal scorers, this guy is the real deal. And he has equaled the record of top scoring Englishman in league uh, history. With 18 goals alongside Glenn Hoddle, Balogun now has 8 games to break the record. That I am certain he will do. This guy is a bagsman. He scores goals all different types. For him to have taken this gargantuan stride showcases a player able to learn. He's proven himself as a starter. So the question then becomes, what's Arsenal's next step? Well, according to David Ornstein, Arsenal have a big call to make. As Balogun wants to be a first choice next season, ideally at Arsenal, but it's not looking realistic. So a move definitely appeals amid huge interest. With two years left on his contract, there are no plans to renew or go on loan again. Balogun is ambitious. He wants to be a starter straight away and I like the mentality. But at the same time, you have to be realistic. Gabriel Jesus and Leandro Trossard give Arsenal something different. They make the Arsenal attack fluid. They get the best out of Gabriel Martinelli and Bukayo Saka. Arsenal have a different way of playing. We share the goals. And that's a key reason to why Arsenal are fighting for the title. Arsenal already have a special number nine in Gabriel Jesus. And after scoring again at Anfield, his phenomenal record of never being on the losing side when scoring in a Premier League game has continued. Gabriel Jesus averages 8.7 touches in the opposition box per game, the highest in the league. He might not be the elite goal scorer, but what he offers Arsenal is elite ball retention and Gabriel Jesus' ability to carry the ball is the best in the league, averaging 2.1 dribbles per game and then you have Balogun with 0.8 dribbles per game, this guy's a different profile. So what do Arsenal have planned? Well Balogun has massive admirers and according to Florian Plettenberg, the 21 year old is on the shortlist of RB Leipzig who are trying to replace Christopher Nkunku. The striker will be cheaper than Jonathan David, therefore interesting for Leipzig and many clubs are in the race. For a player out of contract in 2025, how much are we talking? According to reports in Germany, Leipzig are dealing for Balogun. However, there is a lot of competition for the player. Arsenal would demand more than 40 million euros in the event of a sale. Not only are strikers of a premium, but Arsenal would be selling from a position of power because ultimately we don't need to sell the player. If he's willing to fight for his place, he can still have a future at the Emirates Stadium. But if a team wants to sign for Ren Balogun, comment down below how much do you believe Arsenal should be charging. Now let's go to the Bundesliga and talk about a potential right back signing. Wolfsburg's German international Riddle Baku. According to Florian Plettenberg, the 25 right back is very open to leaving Wolfsburg in the summer. The dream destination is England and he is on the shortlist of Arsenal confirmed. Interest from Spain as well. Possible price tag around 15 million euros. 25 years of age and this isn't the first time that Arsenal have heard of Baku. No, we're not talking about 2019. We're talking about a player that Arsenal have liked in the past. This year, Baku has five goals and one assist. That's more than any Arsenal fullback. Ultimately, even though we have Ben White, whose recent attacking game has improved, Riddle Baku is more of a natural fullback and I think going forwards, he definitely improve us. We've talked about even fresh Nader, so Arsenal definitely want to sign a right back. Riddle Baku's a little bit older at 25 years of age, entering the peak of his powers. With Arsenal returning to the Champions League. Maybe Arsenal will want to sign more ready-made players. But keeping it in the Bundesliga, let's talk about Bayern Munich midfielder Ryan Gravenberch. According to reports in Germany, Arsenal are interested in Ryan Gravenberch and are monitoring his situation. No negotiations yet. Bayern trust Gravenberch to make a breakthrough at the club. Now it all depends on Thomas Tuchel and whether he needs the player or not. If he doesn't, Gravenberch could leave in the summer. Arsenal seem to like this player and even according to the reliable Paul Joyce, Arsenal are admirers of Ryan Gravenberch. But why exactly is that? 
Having signed for Bayern Munich in the summer for only 17 million euros, he's only made one start all season with zero goals and zero assists. To see the best of the player, I think you have to go back from his time at Ajax. In 26 starts, five assists and two goals. His most impressive attribute is definitely his ball carrying. 2.2 dribbles per game at a 68% success rate, as well as 4.5 ground duels. And as his heat map shows, a lot of his touches came on the left-hand side, very similar to a certain Granite Xhaka. Graven Birch has so much potential at only 20 years of age. There is a reason why Bayern Munich signed him in the first place. Despite being so young, this guy also has a lot of experience in the Champions League. He's already made 20 appearances in the competition. Arsenal definitely are going to sign a left sided number 8, but as we return to the Champions League, should we be more ambitious? And that's where you might have Jude Bellingham. The Athletic have confirmed in the past that Arsenal do like the player, despite it being so expensive, but for so long it seemed like Bellingham was set to go to Liverpool. But according to recent reports, those guys are out of the running as they can't afford him. And according to reports in Germany, Bellingham has ruled out Man City, PSG, and Chelsea as potential destinations, as Bellingham wants to play for a prestigious club club with values like passion, honour and reputation rather than money. This transfer rather is less about the profile and more about the finances. But oh boy would his profile suit Mikel Arteta's system. You see what Arteta has done with Granit Xhaka and how he's transformed him. Imagine what he could do with a player the profile of Jude Bellingham. We've seen him thrive in the Champions League, we've seen him thrive at the World Cup. Fantastic at carrying the ball, great in terms of ground doors. His passing numbers are also fantastic, he gets goals, he gets assists. Jude Bellingham is an all-rounder and the prospect of him playing in the Arsenal midfield alongside Odegaard and Poe, this could be a dream move. But then you wake up and you see the finances, £130 million is what we're talking. But as Arsenal try to enter phase 4 of their project, is the next step signing superstars? And if so, do you believe Arsenal should make a move for Jude Bellingham? But talking to midfielders, we also have Moses Caicedo and according to Fabrizio Romano. The reality is that Caicedo is still expected to leave Brighton in the summer to get a top club move. Arsenal are still there and very interested. This is still a possibility, but this is where it gets confusing. Caicedo has recently signed a new contract until 2027, which surely makes the transfer more difficult. But as Fabrizio Romano says, this new contract was to give Caicedo a bigger salary, as it was promised to the player. But the reality is, Caicedo is still expected to leave in the summer. We can't forget this guy wants to move to the Emirates Stadium, and in January he made a transfer request publicly on social media requesting a move to Arsenal. Caicedo is a very rare profile. This guy has so many of the bases covered and the prime example was his last game against Tottenham. 76 touches, 53 accurate passes, 2 key passes, 4 out of 4 long balls, 2 successful dribbles and 7 out of 14 ground duels. Elite in terms of ball retention, so secure on the ball, this guy would be our Thiago type of profile. Arteta is trying to make Arsenal even more dominant and Caicedo would give us even more control. But Brighton have a host of top midfielders and they also have Alexis McAllister whose father and agent recently confirmed that we are starting talks in general but it is most likely that Alexis will be playing for another team next July. It seems that McAllister is going to leave, he might even be cheaper and according to Ben Jacobs, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester United have all looked at Alexis McAllister in different degrees but there's nothing advanced just yet ahead of the summer. Brighton are the team with the midfielders Caicedo and McAllister. Arsenal like both of the players, it seems like they can only sign one but who do you prefer? There's also a new team in for Declan Rice. According to Matteo Moreto, Newcastle have made contact with Declan Rice as they enter the race for the England midfielder. You also have Man United, but don't forget Liverpool as well. If they're not going to sign Jude Bellingham, they will still want a blockbuster midfielder. We might have to see a different Arsenal. In the past, the likes of Edu Gaspar have had a different strategy and they don't like competing for players. They don't like bidding wars. Whatever happens towards the end of the season, how are Arsenal going to act and how hungry are they for some rice? Arsenal forward Gabriel Martinelli has been on fire. His performance at Anfield was fantastic and this guy has been scoring goals for fun. With 14 goals this season, that's the most goals scored by any Brazilian in Europe's top 5 leagues. More than Neymar and Vinicius. What makes that even more impressive is all 14 goals have been non-penalties. Martinelli only needs 2 more goals to become the Brazilian with the most goals in a single Premier League season and he's doing that at 21 years of age, 6 more goals and he'll become the youngest ever Arsenal player to score 20 league goals. The standard of Arsenal wide forwards is very high and therefore if Arsenal are going to sign any, they need to be special. And that's why you might have Michael Elise, Crystal Palace's French youth international, who according to reports in the UK, 
Arsenal have interest in signing. A young right winger that could be the perfect competition for Bukayo Saka, Elise, is creativity. Eight assists this season. That's more than Martin Odegaard. His last game shows his potential. A 9.7 rating with three assists, five successful dribbles, 27 accurate passes, six key passes, three big chances created, and nine ground duels won. This guy has all of the fundamentals to be a Mikel Arteta type winger. And just like Saka and Martinelli, Elise can cause chaos at wide. This guy is a natural playmaker and for Arsenal, this could be an opportunity. As according to reports, this guy has a £25 million release clause in his contract. But talking of Crystal Palace wide forwards, what about Wilfred Zaha? As according to reliable reports, Arsenal, Monaco, Bayern and Borussia Dortmund have expressed interest in signing Wilfred Zaha. The player wants Champions League football. Out of contract at the end of the season, potentially available on a free transfer, this guy could be the ultimate opportunity. And Arsenal fans know about his quality too well. Think about the amount of issues he's caused Arsenal over the years. 2.3 dribbles per game more than Saka and Martinelli. In terms of goals this year he only has 6 but the year prior he had 14. He's now 30 years of age and has a vast amount of Premier League experience. And often in the past Arsenal have gone for the younger profiles like an Elise but as we enter the Champions League with how young this Arsenal team is it might be time to add the experience and after seeing the impact of Trossard maybe signing more Premier League proven players is the step that Arsenal need to take. But comment down below would you take Wilfred Zaha at the Emirates Stadium on a free transfer? Moving on to Arsenal's latest injury news and starting off with a return of a player who's been out for a few weeks and that player is Eddie Nketiah. As Arsenal have confirmed that Nketiah is back in full training. He should be available for the game against West Ham and even though he might not start, off the bench this guy gives Arsenal another option. And how many times have we seen over the past years? Title winning teams need super subs. And now that we have the likes of Nelson, Smithrow, Vieira, Nketiah and Trossard, Mikel Arteta has quite a few potential game changers off the bench. But what about William Saliba? Well, according to Sky Sports, William Saliba is close to returning to full training. It's unlikely that he features against West Ham, but it's not impossible. The news that Arsenal fans needed to hear, Saliba is the and closer and this guy's return is going to be gargantuan because even though Rob Holding has been fine, Arsenal are so much better with Saliba and since Saliba's injury, Arsenal have been conceding on average 1.33 goals per game whereas before the injury, it was only 0.93 per game. Not only is Saliba elite on the ball, the most passes out of any Arsenal player, but he also gives Arsenal control. And in the Premier League, he's the second highest in the league, only behind Aaron Basaka in terms of 1v1 success rate. A whopping 83%, this guy is colossal. And West Ham might be too soon, but after that, Arsenal have some massive games. And that game at the Etihad against Erling Haaland, April 26th, having Saliba available for that could be a difference maker. Moving on to the other Arsenal news today. And let's talk about next season and Arsenal's beautiful new third kit. And here is the brand new leak. The third kit is going to be green. A throwback kit to the 1980s. And here's how it looks on Gabriel Jesus. Personally, I like this kit a lot. From the AFC stitching on the collar to the overall mix of the colours. It might not be the pink of this season, but it's different and I'm a massive fan. But what do you guys rate the new Arsenal third kit out of 10? Stat time of the day and this one's fantastic. Since the start of last season, Arsenal have had 55 goals from players under 21. That is by far are the most in the Premier League. And this is what I think people fail to understand. This Arsenal team is only getting warmed up. They are here to compete for years to come. This won't be our only title charge. And as this team grows with experience alone, they will only get better. These players have the right mentality. And Bukayo Saka sums it up. And as he says after the game against Liverpool, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm satisfied with just the points. We wanted to go over and get all three. So there's a bit of frustration inside me that we didn't do that. It's a stadium that I never won at. So I thought that would be the best opportunity and timing to do it. But we couldn't do it, which is a shame. Was it a good point and was it a bad point? These players have the winner's mindset. But ultimately, with the form that Arsenal have had, 8 games, 7 wins and 1 draw. The four that Arsenal have bought over title with a draw at Anfield is crazy. But we're up against a Man City team that are on fire. And according to Opta, they are now the slight favourites to win the title. They might be 6 points behind, but these guys are picking up form. And in their last game in the Champions League, they smashed Bayern Munich 3 goals to nil. To see the way they play and to think that Arsenal are 6 points clear, it's mental. To beat Man City for a title, you need to be flawless. But Arsenal have a little bit of leeway. Even even though it's 6 points and Man City win the game in hand, it's going to be a 3 point lead. But here's a potential scenario. If Arsenal are able to win all their games, get a draw at Man City and a draw at Newcastle, even if Man City were to win all of the other games, Arsenal would win the league with one point. Yes, that is not going to be easy, but ultimately it's definitely possible. With the form this Arsenal team has shown this season, the reintroduction of William Saliba, Gabriel Jesus finding form, 
if our players can stay fit and available, we can beat these teams. And then those tough away games of Newcastle and Man City where you're allowed to drop points. Arsenal need to take a game at a time and the next game is West Ham away. They might be fine relegation, but as we've seen over the past years, they can cause issues. They've been underperforming their expected points. They're definitely better than the league position. But if you're going to win a title against Man City, West Ham away needs to be a banker. But what do you guys make of the title race? Are Man City the favourites or is it Arsenal? And what are your thoughts going into West Ham? But that is the video there and there. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy in all of his social medias, then the links are down below in the description. But that was all of today's latest Arsenal news. And as Arsenal enter a decisive part of the title race, Arsenal fans keep believing, keep hoping and let's see what happens. I will see you next time. Take care in a bit.